My name is Sara Salihan. I'm 18 years old. I'm currently doing my foundation studies all the way in Gambang, doing human sciences, and hopefully in degree, I'll be pursuing political science. I plan to become a politician in the near future. And um, as of now, I'm actively involved in activism dedicated to empowering young females all across Malaysia, as well as conducting English workshops for primary school students from time to time. Uh, I also love writing. Recently, I published a book, but to be honest, it's not an achievement for the Sara that is standing in front of you right now, but instead, it is a gift and a dream come true to little Sara, who, believe me, is very, very different from what you can see right now. She used to write her poems in secret, in hiding, because no matter how proud she was of those sentences, she thought that pride was a sin, and she couldn't believe in herself enough to come out with the things that she was passionate about, like talking or writing. So really, all that I do right now, I do it with every other girl out there who faced the exact same problem in mind. All that I do, I do it with a whole lot of them in mind. And my dream as of now is definitely to grow up and become someone who allow these girls their dreams. I just want to remind them that they are capable of wonders. And it's true, but they just have to start believing that on their own. You see, the only regret that is so prominent at this point in my life was feeling inferior. I always felt like I was the least important person in the room, like the person with the least power, ETC. You know, it took me a while for me to understand that there is no such thing, there's no hierarchy to our power. There's just a difference in our eternal power. I understand that now, and it took me a while. But I can't believe that I used to spend my life living in fear and feeling powerless I can't do this, I can't do that. I limited myself to what I can and can do. I could barely leave the house. In fact, when my family would go out for lunch or dinner, I would want to stay at home because going out would include me having to meet people. And people are bad. And people are out there to get me. And people are going to think so many things about me. And I don't want to drown in the thoughts of what people would think about me. I used to think so much about all of the bad things that people had to offer. Now, I think I have grown to the level of understanding that not everyone is bad. In fact, I think a lot of people is good. I think everyone standing in front of me here is good, right? Please don't hate me, right, right? Okay, cool. Okay, so yeah, I've grown to love people now, so please don't worry. Um, I've always been scared. I've always felt powerless or so I believed. So to this day, it is my greatest regret that I once lived my life in accordance to fear and the absence of power that comes with it. So, you know, I wasted so much opportunity, so many chances to be happy or all of the lessons that I could have learned if I was just willing to bite the bullet and take the risk. I wasted all of that simply because I felt powerless, which is why it is now my life's purpose to make young girls all across Malaysia to feel powerful because they already are. It's just they have yet to feel like so. So it's my dream and little Sarah's dream to allow every other girl out there their dreams. Okay, so I just want to put out that I am not going to get political in my speech, but politics is an inescapable aspect of our lives. And unfortunately, that includes this speech. No, I won't show my support or my hate for political parties or politicians, but I would like to shed a light as to how certain policies are really important for us to, you know, prioritize, for us to make sure that we are able to assist girls all across the nation and all across the border and make their lives better, okay? I will, however, highlight some female politicians who deserve our celebration, not because they're female, but because they're leaders who were told they aren't fit to be leaders simply because they were female. We'll get to that part soon enough. All right, uh, also because I am one to believe that the female gender possesses so many great qualities that makes them good leaders. It's just we were inherently taught that all of our characteristics and our femininity is a symbol of weakness. So yeah, I beg to differ because I believe that through all of the horrible things that our gender has went through, we were able to fight through. We were able to persevere. So it is my greatest hope that all of us here follow suit. 
Okay, so um, here's how I received my wake-up call from being someone who didn't want to go out and was scared of people to being someone who loved people and I wants to fight for them. Um, when I was 11, I lost my father to cancer and um, I didn't only lose a legal guardian, but I also lost my faith in the quiet dreams that I had. All of my quiet songs, my quiet poems, every little quiet dream that I ever had, I lost it. Because the only reason I kept it still alive for me to listen to was because of my father. Now that he was gone, when I buried him, when I buried him, I buried along all of the quiet faith I had in myself. So uh, one day when my mother was driving us back home, my siblings and I back home, uh, we were in the car and I suddenly just dropped this huge bomb on them. I was like, mom, I can no longer write my full name because I'd be reminded of him, and that hurts. To which my mother responded with, Ade, we named you with love, and love isn't supposed to hurt. And that hit me, but don't worry, I'm Malay, I come from a Malay household, so I firstly got scolded for you know, attempting to forget my father, but I left that part out because you guys do not want to hear the belete coming from a Malay mother, right? Okay, but yeah, it, it served me a real good wake-up call. Love isn't supposed to hurt. Love doesn't hurt. So just because my father is gone, does that mean his love is gone with him? I don't think so. And I don't want to think so as well. It costed me his death for me to blow life into the meaning of my name which happens to be bravery, or so I was told. I'm not sure, I'm not a linguist, right? But yeah, they told me my name means bravery. So I promised, to, I promised myself that I will wake up every single day and live up to my name. No matter how small of an act of bravery, I committed to myself that I will live up to my name the way he intended me to feel, the way he wanted me to feel. Powerful. Okay, now power. Um, power is a strong word. You know, power may rhyme to our minds with, you know, um, strength, wealth, fame, position, status, so on and so forth. What we tend to overlook is that power is firstly synonymous to control. Um, now, some of you may be thinking about high positions of power, a king, a capitalism even, right? But um, I'm not talking about that. I, I don't blame you for thinking so as well, because power, we have been taught that power is synonymous to a king, and a king is always a man. But here's where I'd like to challenge this engraved perspective in our society about how power is synonymous to men, the correlation between power and gender. I think that when you give a man power, he extends this power to control those that fit his best interest. like you know, a country, a company, the world even. But when you give a girl power, and mind you, this is uh, within the context of status quo, which is to say we live in a world where the female gender has been subjected to oppression since the beginning of time. We have been taught to disassociate ourselves with power for far too long from what we can and can wear to who is at fault for the rape, is it the rapist or our outfit, we have been told, we have been brainwashed into feeling powerless because we had so many people who were entitled to our lives and how it is meant to be lived. So when you give a girl power, she uses that power to control the many variables that influences her and her life. She now gets to decide who she wants to be who she can be, what she's capable of, what she can wear, the slightest bit of change that a girl can do for her to start controlling her life and taking ownership of what's rightfully hers. This is a revolution, and I think this is the best revolution of all. Because when you give a girl power, you give her the most basic human rights, which is the rights to live. And you also give her the most basic unwritten human right, the rights to dream. So I've always questioned, you know, this premise of girls are too emotional to lead, hence they can't make good leaders. What? I don't think so. Do you guys think so? Anyone here think so? Can I hear yeses? Okay, so it's a no, right? No, okay, cool. Thank you, that one person. I love you already. You see, we were taught that our femininity is synonymous to weak, that having emotions is weak. I don't think so. I think having emotions is human. 
For a man who pays a blind eye to children being forced into marriages to say, I am too emotional because I don't want girls to be forced into marriages. Yo, girls aren't too emotional. You're too emotionless. That's a wake up call that we need to give out to them, right? They only know of greed and pride, yet we suffer from the consequences of their actions. Anything like aspiring to become a politician at this age is an extreme risk because I'm not only putting all that I have on the line, but I'm also learning how to thicken my skin because people will now start judging me based on what I wear, who I'm going out with, how I look like in pictures, instead of how I speak, what I'm speaking on. And this is what it means to inherently be female. It means people feel entitled to who we are and the identity that we carry. Hence why I, I just, you know, coming from a boarding school, no matter how much I love them, they were unnecessarily strict with us girls, whereas the boys from across the lake seemed to have it all so easy. We didn't have control. So when I say something along the lines of, girl power, I'm only granting you back with what has been taken away from you. Power. To decide what to do with your life and to dream the way nobody ever allowed you to. You know, these narratives, we need to take it back and make it our own. I'm not too emotional for empathizing with young girls who are forced into marriages. I'm human. I'm not, you know, a radical, rebellious, free thinker, liberal for saying it's okay for a girl to wear whatever she wants to wear. I'm human. I'm not an emotional ball of sadness. I'm not someone too easily influenced by sad stories. When I tell you we need to create a wider form of accessibilities for our special needs friends, you know, having empathy and being selfless were the first lessons that we were taught as female. From the way our mothers sacrificed their favorite piece of chicken or the way they quit their jobs to take care of us or because our fathers told them that getting a job was his job. You see, it's 2019, sure, there are countless of women who has broken these ceilings, but I don't think it's all of us. And if it's not all of us, then it's none of us. Hence why we have to keep pushing for this. It is best that we start defining these characteristics as characteristics for a person instead of characteristics of a female, right? Because our boys, we need to teach them better. What are we teaching our boys right now? I don't think we're doing enough. We're barely trying. All right, so um, I promised you a story. Let's talk about one of my favorite minister and also my dear mentor, YB Zraida Kamarudin, Minister of uh, Housing and Local Governance. So um, at, over a decade ago, all the way in Ulu Baram, Sarawak, there was a case in which there were 10 to 14 year old school girls who lived too far from their schools. So in order for them to go to school, they have to hitch a ride from a timber worker and lorry drivers, right? But that's the thing, this is the catch. These girls who are on the way to school with intentions only to learn a thing or two were molested and raped by the timber workers and the lorry drivers. And I can't tell you how much this story hurt me because it wasn't just something that occurred once or twice, although that would hurt me already, but it became what seemed like a daily routine for these girls. But the reason as to why I keep telling this story was what YB Zraida did in response to this problem. What she did, she rioted, she complained, she couldn't stop holding protests in Sarawak. She was even banned from Sarawak because she demanded for justice for our girls. And sure, our girls have better accessibility to go to school, ETC, but the perpetrators have yet to face justice. And even till today, YB Zraida is still pushing for justice against these fellow perpetrators. When she brought this issue up in parliament, some educated men told her, well, that's okay. Them getting raped is a sacrifice for education. Sacrifice. Wow, idiot. Can you believe he called the act of sexual violence against little children who were so innocent and only on their way to school as an act of sacrifice? Do you understand what I mean when I tell you men are too emotionless? I think the best lesson that I could extract from that story is that women make the best leaders. Because when you're looking for a leader, you're looking for someone to represent you, someone who can resonate with every problem that you're going through. Not just problems financially, economically, but our problems as people. And people deserve to be represented by people. 
So to have an emotionless monster discredit all of that simply because he thinks it's simple sacrifices hurts me more than I can tell you. But that's the thing. This is why we need to push for women to hold high positions of power. Because when they make a decision, they don't make it for themselves. They're not holding parliamentary posts simply because of money, simply because it's another job. But it's passion. But we can barely fit the 30% quota of female representation in the parliament, which is a problem that we need to address and we need to fix. Because we need girls representing girls in the parliament. We cannot have men make up these decisions for us. They don't understand us like that. Something I'm sure you all know by now. So when I push forth the idea of girl power, or I tell you we need to have women representing us within high positions of power, it's because we deserve to be out there with them. Our voices deserve to be carried by them. In the future, I hope that we call our female leaders as leaders because we can now concede that we belong up there, that they belong up there, and we all belong up there with them. That's all for me. Thank you so much.